Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what cost index means and what the practical effects inside the sim are. So cost index, simply put, is simply a ratio of how much fuel do I want to burn based on how fast I want to go. Now you're sitting here going, well obviously if I'm in an airliner I'm going to go as fast as I can because that way I get there sooner and it saves me money because I don't have to pay my pilots as much. Well there are some problems with that of course because as you go faster and faster you're also burning more fuel. So trying to find a balance between having just the right amount of speed as well as um, not increasing your fixed costs is going to be your cost index. As a matter of fact, if I want to borrow iVal real quickly here, you can take a look at a good demonstration of what this really means. Obviously, if I go faster, I burn more fuel. However, I use less time cost. You know, I'm not borrowing the plane as long. I don't have to play my flight attendants as much. You know, there's not as much, you know, holding up a gate or something somewhere. So trying to find that perfect spot is what airliners are always trying to achieve. Because once they find that sweet spot, they have the most amount of savings possible for their flight. What does that mean for us? Well, if you take a look here, I've loaded up a nice little flight down to Atlanta from Bradley, and you can see that our Simbri friends recommended a cost index of 47. Let's go ahead and take a look at our legs page real quick. What you'll notice here is uh, as I'm climbing up to Veers, I'm managing about 314 knots. I get up to Basie, I'm, uh, I'm stepping up to a Mac, uh, 0.829 at a flight level of about 334. And you can see I get up to Lana doing 0.829 at about flight level 380. Now let's go back there for a second to my performance page and let's go ahead and adjust this cost index. I'm gonna set my cost index to zero. Zero simply means give me the longest range cruise you can possibly give me. So let's go back over there. I'll head over to my legs page and we'll take a look what happened. And what you'll observe here is my cruise speed has decreased significantly. You'll also notice that my climb speed has reduced, meaning my aircraft is now spending a shorter amount of time getting to altitude, but it's not going to be traveling as fast. So let's go ahead back over to that one more time, go back to my index page, go back to perf. Let's say I want to do a really absurd cost index. Let's say I want to do 999, which is I think the highest number you could insert. I don't think you can do anything past 999. I'm basically saying, I don't care. Get me there as fast as you possibly can. If I go over to my legs page now, you will see here that we climb like a cannon. We are sitting at the absolute peak, 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 peak of our speed here. We're doing 320. We can't go faster than that in a climb. And you can see once we cross to a proper altitude here, we actually get almost all the way up to Mach 0.9 until we finally settle in on our cruise altitude at flight level 380. You can see just how hard we are pushing this aircraft to try to get there. The other thing you'll notice, which you'll find very interesting here, is we get to flask and basically fall out of the sky getting down to our 4,000 at or above. As you can see, it's a 278 nautical mile jump up here. I really needed to put in an arrival procedure, but I felt like this would be a really, really good demonstration of what's going on. So now the question you're going to ask, of course, is what is the best cost index to use? Well, the interesting thing is most companies will actually have a specific cost index to tell you to use, like Delta would use 45, American Airlines would use 90 or something like that. For you, the user, the person flying in a virtual airplane in a simulation, you choose the cost index. For me, it all comes down to what I'm trying to achieve. Generally, if I'm trying to get there in a hurry, maxing the cost index out is the way to go. If I'm looking for a more leisurely path, we can always use the cost index that's recommended by Simbrief. For example, if I go powering through this real quick, you will notice that it recommended that 47. That 47, if you remember from that original diagram we pulled up a minute ago, is that economy point that fortunately they calculated for us. The only other thing you really, really need to consider when you're working with cost index is to remember that if you have a strong headwind, you have to use a higher cost index to save money because you're going to be spending so much more time in the air in a headwind versus if you're in a tailwind, you can reduce the cost index and spend less time basically with a bad wind. You can take advantage of the stronger wind by getting up to altitude sooner. Enjoy.